Grade 12. Hello, hello. Welcome to your accounting lesson. I am Looney. That's Ashraf. Ashraf, how are you? Good, and you? I'm good, thanks. Yeah, you've been all I know. You've been hiding somewhere. I, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing for the matrix today? Today we're looking at reconciliation, but we're specifically the creditors' reconciliation. Okay, cool. Matrix, I hope you guys are excited for your lesson. Make sure that you do hit us up on Facebook and on Twitter. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash learn extra and then our twitter handle is at learn extra and you can get all the show notes the videos and the schedules on learn.mindset.co.za and if you want to win yourself this awesome awesome casio calculator all you need to do is complete the test yourself section from our notes fill in the entry form with all your correct details complete all the questions and you get and if you get all the answers right you might stand a chance to win this awesome casio calculator but now it's time for your accounting lesson so i'll hand it over to ashraf thank you very much Okay, guys, credit is reconciliation. But before we go there, let's look at our challenge question. And in the challenge question, it says there, briefly explain the two types of creditors' reconciliation. In other words, the emphasis is on creditors' reconciliation. The two types of creditors' reconciliation. Now, think about that. Think about the challenge question, and you should come up with an answer. In terms of creditors, let's look at the important features. Number one, at the end of each month, we are receiving a statement from whom? From our creditors telling us exactly that this is the amount that we owe them, right? This statement will then show you all the transactions that have taken place during the month. Okay, so basically, what am I talking about? I'm talking about a statement. Here's a statement that I received from my creditors telling me this is what you owe us right now. At the same time, I am keeping a record of my transactions with my specific creditors in my creditors ledger. Okay? Remember, we are now talking about reconciling the creditors statement that we are receiving with the creditors ledger as it appears in our account. Okay? So immediately you can see where the reconciliation is coming from. Now, there may be some transactions that are recorded. For example, there may be transactions that are recorded whilst we have already received the statement. Just to illustrate by means of an example once again. If I have received my statement by the 25th of the month, all the transactions that I've entered into on the 26th, 27th, 28th of the, of the month, there's no way that that information can appear on my statement. Obviously, a timing difference. Now, you're, using me, you're, you're hearing me use the word timing difference, and I'm sure it's ringing a bell. And where's the bell ringing? About bank reconciliations. Think about it. Think of the similarity between a bank reconciliation and this reconciliation where I'm reconciling my creditor's statement, notice, creditor's statement, bank statement, draw a similarity between the two, and creditor's ledger, my bank account. So therefore, you can see it is very similar to your bank reconciliation statement. Okay, now, what's the procedure that we're going to follow here? Number one, compare the monthly statement against the creditor's ledger. So you're comparing the creditor's statement that you've received. Here's the statement that I've received from my creditor. I'm comparing it with what? With my balance as it appears in my ledger. So there are two things that we're comparing. The statement with the ledger. So you can clearly see the relationship between what I'm talking about here, the 
statement from the creditor and the creditor's account as it appears in my creditor's ledger. Right. Now this is, this is interesting. And again, should not be too difficult to understand. The debit column of the statement is compared with the credit side of the ledger account. Why am I saying that? Obviously, in our books, when the person owe, when the person that we are owing money to, that's why it's, a, it's called a creditor, a creditor is somebody we owe money to, that person will send you a statement, but to that person, you are a debtor. Please understand this. You are owing money to somebody because you've purchased goods from that person. That person is your creditor. Why? You owing money to them. But to that person, if we change and look from, the, from, a, from that person's perspective, what will that person say? That business will say that that person owes money to us. So, yes, it's our creditor because we are owing money to them. But from their perspective, it tells them clearly that these are our debtors. And that is why you notice that the debit column of the statement is compared to the credit side of the ledger account. And obviously, vice versa. The credit column of the statement is compared with the debit side of the ledger account. The next item that we're going to look at would be if there are any errors and or omissions where in the books of the business receiving the statement, these must be corrected. That means once we've received our statement and we've seen, okay, in our books, there are certain errors and or omissions. Obviously, this comes about after we have compared our creditor's ledger account with the creditor's statement. Immediately, once these errors and omissions have been verified, very important, verify the information before recording. Check where is the error actually taking place and how would we then correct it. Okay, now it's possible that if the creditor has made an error, okay, the creditor has made an error, in other words, maybe arithmetical omissions, etc., the business receiving the statement must notify the creditor so that the necessary corrections can be made by the creditor in order for us to settle the difference. Remember? Reconciliation? Bringing together? What are we bringing together in this case here? The balance as per the statement from the creditor with the balance as it appears in my creditor's ledger account. This is what we call an external reconciliation. A very, very important concept that we are discussing here. Okay, now, we then prepare a creditor's reconciliation statement. Now remember something else. This creditor's reconciliation statement is what I always refer to as an extension of your creditor's statement. That means if these errors had to be corrected, how would they then appear on the creditor's statement? So keep this in mind. And again, you'll find me continuously referring to the bank reconciliation statement. When we prepare a bank reconciliation statement, what do I always say? The bank reconciliation statement is an extension of your bank statement. It's like a piece that you add to your bank statement. So if this is my creditor's statement and I want to prepare a reconciliation, what do I do? I'll, I'll extend it, continue from where we've, we've left off and extend and put in the errors and the information. In that way, you would then arrive at the correct balance. Now, what are these differences that can arise? Let's look at the various differences that we can have. One, the creditor may have prepared the statement 
on a different date from the date on which the business is receiving the statement. Obviously, think about it. I alluded, I alluded to it earlier on. When I said, you are receiving the statement on the 24th or the 25th of the month. So all the transactions that you have entered into after the 24th or the 25th of the month, after having received that creditor statement, those transactions will definitely not appear on the statement. And as a result, they will have to be entered so that we can reconcile our creditor statement with our creditor's ledger account. You will notice I'm emphasizing at all times the reconciliation is between my creditor's statement and my creditor's account as it appears in my creditor's ledger. Just by the way, how many of these recons would we be preparing? Come on. The answer is as many creditors as we have. For example, if we have five creditors, then we would have to reconcile five times each creditor's account will have to be reconciled to what? To the statement that we are receiving from that creditor. So keep that at the back of your mind. This is what we refer to as an external creditor's recon. Yes, there is another recon as well. And what is that recon? That reconciliation, also a creditor's reconciliation, where we reconcile the ledger account, the creditor's control account, with our creditor's list. But more about that later. Let's carry on looking at the differences here. One, we've dealt with that one. Invoices that are omitted or entered incorrectly. It's possible that an invoice, we have entered it incorrectly, or it's possible that the supplier, the creditor, has omitted an invoice. Highly possible. Remember, these are all errors and omissions that can take place. The next one, are your credit and debit notes omitted or entered incorrectly? Once again, you find a situation here where a credit note is left out, entered incorrectly, posted to the wrong side of the account. There's a, there's a number of possible errors that can creep in when we are doing our reconciliation between the creditor's statement and the creditor's account as it appears in the creditor's ledger. Right? The next one is amounts paid and discounts entered incorrectly. It's a possibility, right? The next one, arithmetical errors. We edit incorrectly. We didn't calculate the discount correctly. There's a host of reasons why these two, I these two items, what are we referring to? The creditor's statement that is sent to us on comparison with the creditor's account as it appears in my creditor's ledger. Okay, transactions not recorded. Okay, there's a possibility that there was something went wrong and a particular transaction was not recorded. In that case, also, understand something. All these differences are going to result in what? They're going to result in your creditor's statement not agreeing with your creditor's account as it appears in your ledger. And that's what you need to understand. So you can clearly see in this particular reconciliation, what am I reconciling? Once again, you hear me saying it continuously in this lesson. I want to draw your attention to the fact that we are reconciling the creditor's account, the statement that we receive from the creditor, with the creditor's account as it appears in our creditor's ledger. So this is an external reconciliation. Okay, then there may be interest that is charged by the creditor not taken into account. Obviously, when you receive your statement from your creditor, then you ascertain, yes, here there's a particular interest that they charged us and we must now update our ledger accounts. Okay. So what you've seen in this segment of the lesson is basically an explanation on an external bank, uh, sorry, on an external creditor's reconciliation. 
Okay, now that is important. Why? Because when you're dealing with creditors, there's always another type of a reconciliation. And this reconciliation that I'm referring to now is where we're going to reconcile our creditor's control account as it appears in our general ledger as compared to the creditor's ledger as it appears in our books. So clearly you can see that this reconciliation is an internal creditor's recon. What are we reconciling? The creditor's reconciliation account as it appears in my general ledger with the creditor's list or the creditor's ledger as it appears in our books. Now I'm sure you want to know more about the second type of, bank of a creditor's recon. If you want to know more, the place to be is with whom, Looney? Where must they stay? With us. With us. <laughs> That's right. So don't you stray or go away. The place to be, learn extra live. <laughs> My set is don't you stray or go away. I'm going to take a very quick break, but don't go anyway. We'll see you straight after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters, from that break. I hope you guys are still enjoying the show. Big congratulations goes out to Tamira and I do for winning this awesome, awesome Casio calculator. Well done. And if you want to be like Tamira, please complete the test yourself section from our notes. Complete the entry form. I'll post all the details on our Facebook page. Click the submit button and you have until tomorrow at 12 in the afternoon to enter this competition. So you can be like Tamira and win. So Ashraf, yes. what do you know about this Bring Back Our Girls campaign? Oh, what a question. I was wishing you asked <laughs> me that question. <laughs> Looney, we had an excellent placard demonstration this morning. Mm at the Lanesia Muslim School mm. and our RCLs and the girls in particular and um, I'm going to actually mention her name mm. her name is Lamiz Kaji she orchestrated this placard demonstration where we appealed to Boko Haram to bring back our girls mm. because that those are our girls as well yes. and we want them to come home and I want to thank the learners especially the girls at the Lanesia Muslim School for the excellent effort the humanitarian effort that they put in to show them that those are our girls and we want them back. Yes, and it's so awesome to see that not only people from their um, country are taking part Absolutely. in this, it's all over the it's world. Over Everyone the world. is bringing awareness and, to and, this. And we created such yes. awareness amongst our other learners and parents and we had a placard demonstration outside the school on the main road. Mm. And it was awesome, really awesome. Hopefully it will get through yes. to those people and they will bring back the girls Certain, safely. Certainly. We pray that our girls are brought safely back and reunited with their families. Yes. But, yeah. but thanks for the question. Yes. And, uh, once again, all of you pray that our girls come back safely. They are ours mm. and we miss them. Yes. Right. Thanks, keep Nini. them in your prayers, guys. Thanks. Everything that you do, just remember them and keep them in your prayers. Thank but you now it's time much. for the accounting lesson. Right. Again. Back to our accounting. This question says, you are the internal auditor of Valentine stores, a gift shop owned by Mark Maso Masuku, the creditor's control account and the creditor's list were prepared by the, by the bookkeeper, Ditsy Donald. Now, Ditsy was a bit dizzy and the postings from the journals have been done, but you have noted a number of errors and omissions. Now, before you even commence Mindsetters, ask yourself this question. What am I doing? What am I reconciling? They told you that the creditor's control account and the creditor's list were prepared by the bookkeeper. Immediately, it draws your attention to another reconciliation. Remember, not the external one that we did in the previous segment, but another reconciliation where we are reconciling our creditor's control account with the creditor's list. And you've noticed the number of errors and omissions. The first question says, the creditor's control account reflected a balance 
of 61,417, while the total of the creditors list from the creditors ledger reflected a total of 59,387. Clearly you can see these two are not in agreement. Okay? And as a result of that, the question says, briefly explain why it is important that these two figures agree. Right. So therefore, what are we, we going to say? Number one, your creditor's control account, your control account, remember, is a summary of your creditor's list, of your creditor's ledger. Therefore, these two must always be in agreement. So what does this mean? It means that we need to check up if all the journals have been posted correctly. So check your postings. Right? Remember that the control account and the creditors list serve as a check against one another. And therefore it is important for these two to be in agreement. Remember something else, that whatever you've done in particular to your creditors' accounts, it means whatever you've done to creditor A, creditor B, creditor C, you've done in total to your creditors' control account. So at all times, these two must be in balance. So if they are not in balance, as, as our example is here, we can see that these two figures are not the same. We need to, the, the question says, briefly explain why it is important that these two figures must agree. I've explained to you that the one serves as a check on the other. We need to take into consideration that the, the creditor's ledger at the end of the day must be in agreement with the creditor's control account. There may be errors, there may be omissions, there may be fraud taking place. So it all falls within the ambit of internal control. So you ask yourself the question, with regards to internal control, what is the purpose of internal control? Remember, internal control is there to safeguard the assets of a business, right? And likewise, there may be possibilities that fraud may be taking place, and therefore, that's the reason why we would ensure that we have internal control in our business. Okay, now, going back to the question. The question says that there were certain errors and omissions. How are we going to deal with these errors and omissions? Let's take the first one. It says here, a credit invoice for trading stock purchased from Cornell Limited for 3400 on the 28th of July 2009 was not recorded at all. It means it was not recorded at all. It was left out of both the control account as well as the list. Now, ask yourself, how will I correct that? Where will I correct it? Right. Now, taking into consideration the following. Notice that in my general ledger, what will I do? Because these goods were bought from us, we're going to credit the creditor's control. In other words, we're going to increase the creditor's control. Can you see the plus 3,400? That was for transaction number A. We're going to say plus 3,400. Why? Because we are crediting our creditor's control. This is my balance as per my ledger, so I need to add to it. At the same time, at the same time, I must ask myself the question, with regards to Cornell Limited, notice, when it comes to Cornell Limited's personal account, where in the creditors list, what do I have to do? I have to add, can you see, I have added an amount of 3,000, 400. Okay, now you will notice this one has been done for you. Let's now take all the errors and sort them out.
Number two, stock purchased on credit from Cornell Limited, 7,200 was incorrectly posted to the account of your Lisa wholesalers. Right, understand what has happened. We bought stock from Cornell Limited. How much? 7,200. In other words, in other words, this transaction was incorrectly posted to the account of your Lisa wholesalers. The first question that you need to ask yourself is where has the error been made? Remember that this error has been made in both places and therefore is going to affect my control account as well as my list. Now, how will I correct that? Let's go to the control account first. What are we saying? The amount was 7,200. And therefore, what are we going to do? We're going to say, when it comes to transaction number B, it's going to be plus 7,200 in one creditor's account. At the same time, you're going to subtract from the other creditor's account minus 7,200. There are various options that you could have given as a solution. I would prefer that you show both of these. Yes, the net effect is zero, but it shows the examiner that you understand exactly what you are doing. In other words, a plus 7,200, you are decreasing and increasing your creditor's control with the amount. Because remember, it went to the wrong creditor's account. And therefore, we now look at this particular one here, and we ask ourselves the following question. What are, we, what are we looking at? Whose account are we going to increase, and whose account are we going to decrease? Now, the goods were bought from, stock was purchased on credit from Cornell Limited, right? And incorrectly posted to the account of Ulisa. So, Cornell was the correct one, therefore, if you go to Cornell's account, you'll say plus 7,200, and your Lisa minus 7,200. Okay, so you can clearly see that the error has now been corrected. But the question that you needed to ask yourself from the outset, would these two have been in agreement prior to us making the change? Yes, it would have been. Why? It just went to the incorrect creditor. Let's take the next error. Interest of 258 rand must be brought into account on the overdue account <coughs> of <coughs> Cornell Limited. That means we got to charge the we got to enter the interest that has been charged to us by whom by Cornell Limited. The amount was 258 rand. Immediately you tell yourself, right, where am I going to impact? The entry is going to impact on both my creditors control account as well as my creditors list. So in this case, it's going to impact on both places. Once again, Let's go back to my, and you ask yourself, can you see these are the transactions that we are doing? So Cornell Limited, if they are charging us interest, what's going to happen to your creditor's control account? Obviously, your creditor's control account is going to increase in value. Your liability is going to increase plus 258. plus 258, right? And at the same time, notice that this impacts on the account of Cornell Limited as well, and therefore, we're going to owe them a further 258 rand, so you say plus <coughs> 258 rand. Okay, 
So there are some transactions that will impact on both the creditor's control account as well as the creditor's list, sometimes only on one or two. Let's look at the next one to see what's going to happen here. The debit balance of con traders must be transferred to their account in the debtor's ledger. Important. What are they telling us? They are telling us that the debit balance of con traders, okay? Now, immediately, it draws your attention to the fact that con traders has a debit balance, but they are creditors. So they're saying the debit balance of con traders must be transferred to their account in the debtor's ledger. So now, ask yourself this question here. Number one, let's go to Khan Trader's account. And notice that they have, it's indicated on your answer book that they have a debit balance of 563. I'm sure you can see that. So what are we going to say? We are crediting this with 563 and by crediting the personal account of the creditor right what is it that we're going to have to do in our creditors control account let's go to the creditors control account now but before we go there just a bit of an explanation so you can clearly see what we are saying here this is, this is the account of Khan, right? And there's a debit balance. There's a debit balance of 563. That is correct. The 563, let's just check. Yes, 563 is correct. So therefore, the point that I was trying to make for you guys here is the following. Here. There's a debit balance of 563 in Khan's account. Very often... When you, uh, when, you, when you face with the question, it's often very easier to draw up the T account for you to, to see exactly what is happening. What do we want to do? We want to transfer this debit balance out to the debtor's ledger. So what are we doing? We're crediting the account with 563. Can you see? This will result in the account closing. And we are going to debit the amount in the debtor's ledger. So what have we done to the account of Khan? We have credited the account of Khan, and therefore, we're going to credit the account here of Khan. Let's see if we've done that. We have done it, I'm sure. Let's just find it. There's it. We've credited the... the, the, the now, clearly, you can see a debit of 563, and a credit of 563 results now in a balance of zero. There's no balance left in this account of Khan. Okay, by crediting the individual account, you must also credit the creditor's control. And in order to credit the creditor's control, we've got to ask ourselves, plus 563. Remember... When you credit the creditor's control, you are increasing it in value. Why? It's a liability. Creditor's control is a liability with a credit balance. And by you crediting it, you are increasing it in value. Okay, so keep that in mind. So a very simple solution to all of this here is whatever you do to the individual creditors, you have to do to your control account as well. Right, next one. Goods of 8,350 returned to thankful stores were incorrectly treated as a credit purchases and posted accordingly. Right, I think it's almost time for this section to, of our segment for this one to be completed. So we'll leave you, you with that one there. Uh, think about it. When you come back, we'll carry on with our question. All right, mindset is we are going to take a very quick break. Just think about those questions yes. and we'll <laughs> see you straight <laughs> after this.
welcome back my sisters from that break i'm not gonna say much i'm just gonna hand it over back to ashraf because you've got a lot to do and i won't waste your time so ashraf thank you Lenny. we have lots to do let's get on with the job what are we doing guys we're reconciling the creditors control account with the creditors list remember this is an internal reconciliation right it's our books because remember oh yes i remembered something very important Lucky we just going through it. Remember in accounting, many of you have heard of the double entry, right? A debit in your general ledger and a credit in your general ledger. But sometimes when we're dealing with debtors and creditors, we talk about the triple entry principle. I can see those eyes wide open, shocked, <laughs> right? What is this guy talking about? Has he lost his marbles or something like that? No, guys, I haven't. Let me tell you about the triple entry principle. You make a double entry in your general ledger, right? Debiting and crediting in your general ledger. But you make a single entry in your subsidiary ledger. And an example, a classic example, is where we bought goods from a creditor, right? Remember the entry in my general ledger? We're going to debit trading stock and credit creditors control. Is that correct? Yes. But at the same time, the credit in creditors control alludes to the fact that we have to credit the creditors personal account in the creditors ledger. And that is what this recon is all about. Reconciling the creditors control account with the creditors list. Okay. Coming back to our question. Goods of 8350 returned. Let's highlight that returned to thankful stores were incorrectly treated as a credit purchase and posted accordingly right what did we do we had returned goods to our to thankful stores our creditor but it was treated as a credit purchase and posted accordingly step number one Let's go and co correct our creditors' control. The amount was 8350. Let's just cut the amount first. Right now, watch. From my creditors' control, I need to decrease my creditors' control. Right? And when I decrease my creditors' control, the amount is 8350. So minus 8350. 350 however however by me just doing that I'm merely cancelling out the error I'm only cancelling out the portion of the error in other words once again let me show you the ledger account right if we say we treated it as a purchase of 8350 so by me debiting this account with 8350 decreasing it you can clearly see all that I'm doing is I'm cancelling the error and I'm not doing what was supposed to have done, which was a return to the creditor. Therefore, to fix this up properly, we need to make a second entry of 8350 on the debit side of my creditor's control. And therefore, notice, minus 8350 twice. Do you see that? Why? The first one will merely cancel out the transaction and the second one will now do the necessary correct entry in the creditor's control account. At the same time, if I go to the account of thankful stores, right, you can clearly see the same must happen. What must happen? The creditor's account must be decreased and it must be decreased by... 8350 and another 8350 so twice because one like I said will just cancel the original error and the second one will put into effect the actual transaction that we needed to record which was the return of the goods okay next transaction A discount of 
230 rand received from Ulisa wholesalers was incorrectly posted to the creditor's ledger as 320. Right? Like I said, the first thing that you do is identify your error. Where have we made a mistake? In this particular transaction, the error has been made clearly in the creditor's ledger. Right? They're telling you the general ledger is correct. The general ledger is correct. There's no problem with the general ledger. This means what? It means the following. That in my general ledger, when it comes to the transaction here, you can clearly see no entry required. Why no entry required? Because my general ledger is correct. There's nothing to change there. However, in the account of the personal account of the creditor, right? Remember, it was your Lisa wholesalers. And what was the problem? Let's identify the problem once again. We can see that a discount of 230, which we received from Ulisa wholesalers, was incorrectly posted to the creditor's ledger as 320. So immediately you say, fine, take out your calculator, 320 minus 230, and your answer is 90 Rand. So there's a problem of 90 Rand. What happened with the problem? We, we had taken off too much of the account of your Lisa wholesalers. We only received a discount of 230, but we took off 320. So add 90 Rand back to the account of your Lisa wholesalers, and therefore, here we'll say plus 90. Okay, this gives you a clear indication as to where the error has been made and how it must be fixed up. So. Whenever you are doing a question of this nature in the exams or in an activity, always ask yourself the first question, where has the error been made and how will I correct it? Okay. Looney, no questions yet for us? Nope, not yet. Okay. The amount of 2,100 reflected as a refund in the creditor's control account was in fact received from a debtor, Estain, whose account had previously been written off as a bad debt. Right. Now, if that happens, ask yourself the first question. And the first question is, where is the error? Let's go back. The amount of 2,100 reflected as a refund in the creditor's control account. Now, let's do that by means of an example again. They're telling you that you have a creditor's control account, right? You received money, so you debited bank, and you credited creditor's control with 2,100. Right, now, what does the question say? It says there that the amount of 2,100 reflected as a refund in the creditor's control account was in fact received from a debtor whom Estain, whose account had previously been written off as a bad debt. It has absolutely nothing to do with our creditors. The error is definitely in my creditor's control account. How will I fix this error? Here's it here. In order to cancel it out, I need to debit my creditor's control with 2,100, okay? And therefore, you can see how this transaction will not impact at all on my creditor's ledger, but will impact on my control account. By debiting my control account, what am I in fact doing? I am decreasing my control account. And therefore, you will notice that we have to make an entry. What number was this one here? It was number G, I think it is. Yes, it was G, and therefore, how are we going to correct it? Let's go to G. We're going to go to our 
and we're going to say minus 2100. Okay. Next one. Almost there, Luni. Okay. Almost there. <laughs> Almost done with our reconciliation. Right. An amount of 80 Rand in the creditors' allowances journal for trading stock returned was posted to the wrong side of a creditor's account, thankful stores. The moment you come across an entry of this nature, like I've told you before, and I'm telling you again, always, if you have to, just open, open up the account, a T account, and ask yourself, what is the error that has been made? Let's look at the error once again. An amount of 80 Rand in the creditor's allowances journal. That means we had received an allowance from our creditor for trading, so it was posted to the wrong side of the creditor's account. In other words, what were we supposed to do with the account? We were supposed to debit this account with the 80 Rand. What did we in fact do? We credited it with 80 Rand. Right? Why am I saying this? An amount of 80 Rand in the creditor's allowances journal tells you that you were given an allowance. You had to reduce the amount that we were owing the creditor. But instead of reducing it, we posted it to the wrong side of the creditor's account, thankful stores. Number one, the error is made in the creditor's ledger. Does not affect my control account. So no entry in my control account. But in my creditor's ledger, you can clearly see that by me merely debiting this account with 80 Rand, what am I doing? I'm just cancelling out the error. So therefore, I have to double the amount on this transaction. Now listen, this is something important for the exams. Whenever an account has the amount on the wrong side, you can clearly see that was the wrong side. In order to correct it, you have to double it on the other side. So 80 plus the 80 will give you an amount of 160. I have one question. You have got a question? Yes. Okay, let's take From it. From Utloano. Hi, I'm struggling to understand adjustment F. Why am I adding 90 Rand to your Lisa and not subtracting? Because, let's go back to adjustment F. Uh, what was this one? The, 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 this, why are we doing what? Adding. 90 rand to your Lisa. Because we were only given a discount. Right? Who am I talking to? Utlano. Utlano, listen to me, my darling. We were only given a discount of 230. Right? We recorded the discount as how much? 320. Can you see? We, we recorded too much of a discount. We were only, we only given a discount of 230, not 320. Therefore, the difference between the two is the 90 rand. And therefore, we have to take it out because we were not given a discount of 320. Okay, so obviously, this amount of 80 Rand, we're going to post to the account of, um, uh, which data was it? I think it was, who, where did we make the mistake? Let's just find the data, the creditor, sorry. The creditor we made a mistake with was thankful stores. Okay, so you can clearly see now, to compensate for the error, you've got to double it on the opposite side. Okay, so now, by doubling it in the, on the opposite side, you are in, in fact debiting the creditor's account, and when you're debiting the creditor's account, it means that you are subtracting it from there. So minus 160 in the account of thankful stores. Well... Looney, unfortunately, <laughs> that's the end of our show. So basically, my message to you, grade 12s, is that understand the first question, where's my error? How will I correct it? Does it affect my control and my list, or does it only affect the list? If it only affects the list, you fix it up in the creditor's account. If it affects both places, you fix it up both places. But at the end of the day, when you are done with all your corrections, the two must be in harmony. Oh, you have reconciled. Kay. You've brought them together. Right. On that note, we wish you 
everything of the best. Do your preparation. Aim for the moon. Because definitely, if you don't get there, you're going to be a shining star. <laughs> Thank you, Ashraf, for that awesome lesson. Mindset is, as Ashraf said, aim for the moon. If you don't get there, you'll fall in a young star and you'll be a shining star as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. And until next week, we'll see you then. Same time, same place. But from us, until then, goodbye, guys.